Hi all, my name is Tim Olson of Evolution Software. In today's video tip, we'll demonstrate how to create a wood material using ViaCAD Pro in the context of a children's building block set. Our approach will explore using the default wood material and custom wood material using wrapped textures. To achieve a more realistic image, we'll also look at how to create a wood using a procedural texture. Let's go ahead and first create a block. We'll go to the solid primitives, block by diagonals, and locate some points to describe our block. Then let's go up to the data entry window and we're going to change the length and the width and the height to two inches. That's our standard dimension for our block. Now let's go ahead and display the uh, render library and we will pick the materials and wood unfinished. And we're going to grab a maple that's listed in here. And when we find it, we'll just go ahead and grab it and drag and drop it onto our block. Next, let's display our photo render tool. And let's select our first tool and render up our block. So the sides of the block are not exactly what I expected. And that's because of the texture space associated with the default wood. Let me go ahead and show you how you can change that. You can right select on top of the block, go to Photo Render, and then Edit Material. Since this is a wrapped material, how it gets mapped onto the block is defined by this texture space. And so we'll go to our uh, texture space control settings, and we can see the default is using the Z plane. That explains what we're seeing when we're perpendicular to the Z axis. What I'd like to do is select the auto axis. And let's go ahead and preview it onto our drawing and hit uh, update. And now you can see after our, our axis is uh, being determined for our texture coordinate system based on the plane of the facets. You can see now we have the same image mapped to each of the planes. Let's zoom up a bit and render that one more time. Now this is not exactly the color of maple I had in mind. In fact, I have an image of uh, the exact color of maple that I do want. And for this next step, we're going to go ahead and create a custom material using my given bitmap. And to do that, I'm going to slide down to an open area in our render library and click right button, create from image file. Then I'm going to go over to where I've stored my image and I'm going to select it, click open, and I'm going to have it go into the uh, wood unfinished category and I'm going to give it a name, light maple. Now I'm going to drag and drop that onto our block and select render. Now as before, the default has our z-axis planes uh, incorrect, so I'm going to go to Photo Render, Edit Material, go to Texture Space, and put Auto Axis, and we'll render that again. And if you can see, um, there's actually the same pattern as being replicated four times. So I'm going to, I actually want this all to be the same. Uh, image, so I'm going to right click on it, go to edit material, and then notice that the wrapped image has a scale factor. And I'm going to change this to 2. And now let's go ahead and render, and we should see that one image going across the entire extent of each of our block faces. One of the shortcomings of using a wrapped image is that you see the same image is mapped to each of the faces. So in that respect, it's not as realistic as a real wood. So for our next step, we're going to create a procedural texture where a procedural texture defines the wood in full 3D. Let's go ahead and select our 
block, go to the photo render edit material, and for our first one, let's let's just pick a pine and click OK and tell it to render up. And let's zoom in on this corner here and you can see what the 3D does. Here you can see our grain, it's actually 3D, both for the top, the front, and the side faces. Let's go ahead and create a maple for our block. And again, we'll go to Photo Render, Edit Material, and we'll pick Maple. And I'm going to put uh, Preview Zite into my drawing window, and I'm going to click Update. And here we have a uh, 3D maple procedure on our block. Now the colors of my wood and my rings are not quite right. So I'm going to go to wood color and I've used a tool to capture the RGB values of my image uh, for my wood and my, my ring color and I'm going to put those values in right now. And so for my wood I'm going to put 232, 194, and 147. And I'm going to click update. And for my ring color, I have captured 198, 144, and 86. Click update. And you can see my grain is a little black. I'm going to, I'm going to lighten up my grain. And just make it a little bit lighter. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Let's get rid of our render library dialog box. And here you can see our maple using my captured RGB values. Some of the other things you can control with the procedural material include the trunk center and the wood grain direction. And that can be relevant if you have a bunch of blocks next to each other. Uh, for example, let's go ahead and quickly create some blocks, uh, copies of our block. And let's render these two blocks side by side. And you can see, the, because they share a position in space, the wood texture appears to merge between the two blocks. And so what we will do to uh, accommodate that is we're going to change the wood direction. And we'll go to Edit Material. And we'll change the direction. And by default, it's along the x-axis. Let's change it to go along the z-axis. And now let's go ahead and hit repaint. And you can see uh, how our two blocks line up now when they're side by side with different uh, wood grain directions. Thank you very much for watching this video tip. If you would like more, please visit us at www.mastervacad.com. Thank you.